Hey everyone, today we are going to answer the question, how do I divide positive and negative decimals? So dividing decimals is going to follow the same rules for dividing integers with the signs. If the signs are the same, then the answer is positive. If the signs are different, the answer is negative. And we can use this Mickey Mouse to help us remember the signs. We'll cover up the two signs of our numbers and then the remaining sign in the Mickey Mouse is the sign of our answer. So say the signs are the same, a negative times a negative, the sign remaining is a positive, so our answer will be positive. And then say you have a positive times a negative, you would cover those up and you have a negative left, so the sign of the answer would be negative. So we will follow those rules for the signs of the numbers. Now, if we're dividing decimals, we will have a little bit more steps. So we're gonna have two separate things happen. If we have the divisor as a whole number or the divisor as a decimal, the divisor is what we are dividing by. It goes right there. So if this divisor is a whole number, then we will just do long division like usual. And then we will put the decimal point in the quotient directly above the decimal point in the dividend. Let's go ahead and try that on number one. So I have a positive divided by a positive, so my final answer is going to be positive. And then my answer, or the number I'm dividing by, the divisor is a whole number. So I can just divide like normal and then put the decimal point directly above in the quotient. So let's try that. I'm dividing 270.2 by 7. So 27 divided by 7, 7 can go into 27 three times. And then 3 times 7 is 21, and now I'm going to subtract, and I get 6. We'll bring down the 0, and then bring down the 2. I guess we don't need to bring down the two yet. Okay, now 60 divided by seven. Let's see, I think that is eight times. Eight times seven is 56. So we will subtract and I get four and then we'll bring down the two. And then 42 divided by seven is six. And six times seven is 42. I subtract and get zero, so there's no remainder. So I divided like usual. Now I just have to move this decimal point from the dividend directly up into the quotient. So the final answer there is 38.6. Okay, let's look at number two. My divisor is a decimal. So we're gonna have a few more steps. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the decimal point in the divisor to the right until it is a whole number, and then I will move the decimal point in the dividend to the right the same number of places as it was moved in step one. And then we will divide like usual, and we will do what we did in the last one where we'll place the decimal point in the quotient directly over the moved decimal point in the dividend. Okay, so I need to make this a whole number and however many spaces I move in the divisor, I also have to move that many spaces in the dividend. Let's look at the signs first though. I have a negative divided by a positive, so my final answer will be negative. Okay, now I'm going to turn this into a whole number by moving it to the right one spot. And then I'm going to also have to move this to the right one spot to even that out. So we're going to end up doing 685 divided by 5. So let's set that up. 685 divided by 5. So 6 divided by 5, 5 can go into 6 one times. 1 times 5 is 5. I'm going to subtract. I get 1 and then bring down the 8. And then 18 divided by 5, 5 can go into 18 three times. 3 times 5 is 15. Subtract, we get 3, and then we'll bring down the 5. And then 35 divided by 5 is 7. And there was no decimal point in the divisor or sorry, that's the dividend. There was no decimal point in the dividend after I moved it, so I don't have to worry about moving a decimal point 
up in the quotient. I do need to make that negative though, since it was a, originally a negative divided by a positive. So the final answer here would be negative 137. Okay, let's look at number three. We have a negative divided by a negative, so our final answer will be positive. And then I need to make the dividend a whole number. So I'm gonna have to move that decimal to the right one. So that means I'll have to move this decimal to the right one as well and make that 2.8 divided by 11 or 112. Okay, so now I'm gonna set this up 2.8 divided by 112. So I have an issue with this number right here. 112 cannot go into it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a zero here and I'll bring the decimal point right there. And now I'm just gonna think of this as a whole number. How many times can 112 go into 280? It can go in twice. So two times 112 is 224. And now I'm going to subtract Make that a seven, 10 minus four is six, seven minus two is five, two minus two is zero. Okay, now I'm gonna bring down another zero and I need to figure out how many times does 112 go into 560. I'm gonna need to do some multiplication here. It might be five, let's see. Five times two is 10, five times one is five plus one is six. Five times one is five. Okay, so it is five. Five times 112, we just figured out it's 560, and I will subtract and get zero. So the quotient is 0 0.025, and remember that was a positive answer. So the final answer here is 0 0.025. Okay, let's look at number four. I need to make the divisor a whole number. So I'm gonna have to move the decimal to the left two times and I get eight. And I have to do the same thing to this number. So I'll have to add two zeros and get 1600. And then this is a positive divided by a positive. So my final quotient will be positive. So we are gonna end up doing 1600 divided by eight to tell us the quotient here. So eight can go into 16 two times, two times eight is 16. Subtract, bring down the zero. So then eight times zero is zero. Subtract and we get zero, bring down the last zero. And again, eight times zero is zero. So the answer here is positive 200. Okay, number five, there are 2.54 centimeters in one inch. How many inches are there in 127 centimeters? So we will have to do 127 divided by 2.54 to determine how many centimeters there are in one inch. So I'm gonna have to move the decimal in the divisor two times and I'll get 254 and then I'll also have to move it two times in the dividend. So I'll get 12,700. And now I can figure out this problem. We will do 12,700 divided by 254. So I need to figure out 254 times what is 1,270. So I'm gonna try five since this ends with a zero. So 254 times five, four times five is 20, five times five is 25, plus two is 27. 2 times 5 is 10 plus 2 is 12. Okay, looks like 5 is going to work. So 5 times 254, we just figured that out. That was 1,270. We will subtract, we get 0. So I put 0 here, 0 times 254 is 0. So the quotient here is 50. That means there's 50 inches 
in 127 centimeters. Okay, let's look at number six. A stack of paper is 4.875 centimeters tall. How many pieces of paper are in the stack if each piece is 0 0.0075 centimeters thick? So we need to do 4.875 divided by 0.0075. So I need to change the divisor to a whole number. So I'm gonna have to move the decimal point to the right one, two, three, four times. So this will end up being 75. And now let's change the other number, one, two, three, four. I'm gonna have to add a zero. So it'll be four, eight, seven, five, zero divided by 75. So let's go ahead and do that. 48,750 divided by 75. So 75 will not go into 48, so I need to go out one more number, 487. So I'm gonna try 75 times six and see what that will give me. So six times five is 30. Seven times six is 42, 42 plus three is 45. And then 450 plus 75 would be bigger than 487, so I'm gonna stick with this right here. 75 can go into 487 six times. And six times 75, we just found it, it was 450. Now I'm going to subtract. Seven minus zero is seven, eight minus five is three, four minus four is zero, and we'll bring down the five. Okay, now I need to figure out how many times does 75 go into 375. I'm gonna try five since this ends in a five. So 75 times five, five times five is 25. Seven times five is 35 plus two is 37. So 75 times five is exactly 375. So we subtract, we get zero, bring down the zero. Zero times 75 is zero, so the product is 650. So there would be 650 pages in that stack.